Good. All right. Turn in your Bibles to the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. I want us to look at something. I woke up thinking about this. About this word, hallowed. Book of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. It reads like this. After this manner, therefore pray ye. This is Jesus talking. And he goes on to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. I want us to look at this. In verse 9, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, just uh, be with us this evening. Help us, Lord, uh, to receive something from thy word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallowed be thy name. Uh, this is the adoration and glory of God. This examines our relationship. This, this scripture here will, will bring us, uh, will put a mirror in front of our face and it examines our relationship with God. How we adore Him, how we approach Him in prayer. Matthew reveals, uh, right here in the, Matthew 6 reveals who God is. This is a huge step in, in spiritual maturity. Saying, our Father which art in heaven, to saying, hallowed be thy name. This brings us to a point where, where, where uh, uh, we're in direct communication spiritually with God the Father in the name of Jesus Christ the Son. This is a step uh, 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 from, from appreciating God for what he does to appreciating God for who he is. Where are you at in your relationship with him? Where are you at in your prayer time, in your prayer life with the Lord? Think about it. Where are you at? Where's my worship? Where, where's my relationship with Him? We constantly put, fix our eyes on things that are going on around us. In the difficulties, in the hardships. We constantly, our, our mind is not focused on where it should be. Our eyes ain't focused on where they should be on the Lord Jesus Christ. When we pray to God as our Father, we may think about what He, we have a habit of thinking of what He can do for us or, or what He can give us. And our appreciation of who God is changes. We're looking to Him, how we can get something, how we can get a quick fix on something instead of adoring Him, honoring Him, and praising Him. Our appreciation ain't where it should be. Our gratitude ain't where it should be. We're depending on what God does for us or or if he does something uh, 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 we don't agree with, our attitude changes towards him. That's what James calls praying amiss. In the book of James, chapter 4 and verse 3, it says this, Ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it 
upon your lusts. I believe that's the average, the average Christian prayer life. Seeking what we can get and how quickly we can get it. This attitude in the Christian uh, 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 mind has to change. There needs to be adjustment in our thought life. There needs to be adjustment on how we worship God and how we praise his name and how we serve him. What do you seek when you serve God? What are you seeking for? I learned many, many years ago. It was a hard lesson. I was in the mode of seeking blessings from God. The harder I worship, I believe, the better the blessings would come. The harder I worked and, 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 and slaved and served for him, the bigger the blessings would come. My motive was wrong. And I came to God in prayer. Asked him to forgive me. And I promised him then in there that I would serve him and worship him. Just because who he is. We're still here in the book of James, James chapter 4, and let's go to verse 5. The Bible says this, Do you think that the scripture saith in vain, The spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the, unto the humble. Verse 7 says, I want you to listen to this. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. We have to submit ourselves. See, it's the devil that is throwing those darts in our minds that are, that are causing us to lust and to, and, to, and, and to serve and to worship improperly and to pray amiss. The Bible says in verse 8, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. We're absolutely double-minded in the way we think, in the way we pray, in the way we worship, in the way we come to church. We're double-minded. Verse 10, it says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. It should be our desire that our love and appreciation for God is not based on what we can get or what's happening in our lives. But on his character. In the darkest hour of the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said to his father. Glorify thy son. That thy son also may glorify thee. That's John 17. Verse 1. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. Verse 2 says, As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this life eternal, that, and, that, and this is life eternal that they might know thee, 
that they might know thee, that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. In other words, his desire is for the name of God, his Father, to be set apart, to be made holy and be sanctified. It should be our desire to keep God's name holy in our lives and in our families and in our churches. God commands us to be holy because he is holy. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 16. Let's pray. Heavenly Father. I thank you for this time that we had. Bless your word. May it go out and touch hearts. And renew minds. And Lord if there's anyone out there. Who is not saved. May they come to Jesus. Who is the author and finisher of our faith. Just a couple of thoughts. May the Lord bless you real good. Thank you.